So right now, I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Mr. Tom Hackett. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And what a beautiful day it is here uh, in San Francisco today, isn't it? Nice and warm, feels great. I tell you, I flew out here from Austin, Texas yesterday. It was 90 degrees when I left, I had my shorts on, right, polo shirt. And I get off uh, the BART here in San Francisco, it feels like 45. I don't know what the real temperature was, but it uh, feels a lot better today. But um, my talk is about verification IP. And this is different than design IP. Does anybody have a familiarity with verification IP? A couple of heads nod. OK, so just to explain the differences. So uh, normally, when we think of IP, we think of design IP, which are blocks that we put people will buy and insert in their chip, right? So you might buy a common USB interface or a Ethernet Mac or any one of 100 different things that you could use to, to save time in, in assembling your chip. Now, verification IP is meant to help you test the chip, help you to run simulations on the chip. And so it comes in building blocks, just like the design IP. So you might have a USB device or a USB host or Ethernet or all the different various interfaces that there are. But these things are like known good designs that you can put in your test bench and test it against your design, you know, pre-silicon, to see if your design works. And then verification IP, in addition to being a known good design, it has a lot of checks and tests that come with it to help simplify the process of verification. So it's like pre-silicon verification. So that's what, that's what that's all about. Now, in the audience here, how many people are, are design engineers? How about uh, verification engineers? Or work in CAD, let's say. Or have some general interest in what I'm going to talk about. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But um, anyway, let's get started. So uh, we live, I think, in like this totally cool age to be a, an electrical engineer. So when I started my career a long, long time ago at, at TI, I was working on like defense projects, and I couldn't even tell anybody what I worked on. You know, what do you work on? It's like, I'm freaked out. I can't tell you, you know. But um, today, you know, it's like all these cool gadgets, right? Our phones, watches, you know, you can show your, your kids at home, hey, this is what I do, right? So it's a great time to be an electrical engineer. And, and certainly, you know, in the chips that make all these devices possible, there's all kinds of technology, you know, developments that came together to make these things possible, right? Semiconductor technology, all kinds of different things. But, but one thing that kind of gets overlooked, I think, is the change in standard interfaces that's occurred over just like the past four or five years. And so this slide speaks to that. So it looks at three different groups of interfaces. One is uh, fabrics say, supplied by ARM, ARM fabrics. And these are the standards that support those fabrics. And then um, PCI Express and DDR, or memory. So if we take a look at these three groups, we can see that whereas like for the uh, AMBA AXI, the AMBA 3 AXI spec, that was out for a long time. Countless chips designed incorporating that, that fabric interface. And, but just since about, oh, 2011 or so, ARM has expanded the number of um, uh, uh, specs, the uh, interface specifications, to allow people to do different, optimize for different types of designs. So in about 2011 or so, they introduced the ACE specification, which was a variant of uh, AXI that supports multi-core uh, design, specifically for mobile. And then they came out with a CHI interface a couple years ago, which is taking that to the next level. So different variations off this common AXI standard. In the PCI Express area, they went from Gen 1 to Gen 2 to Gen 3, which is like the current standard. And then just in the past couple years, different versions off of that. Uh, NVMe, that's uh, non-volatile memory express, which is what the latest um, uh, uh, like notebooks that are using solid state drives are using that interface. So for instance, the new um, Apple uh, MacBook, right, that uses the NVM Express interface as the solid state drive interface. There's a mobile PCI Express that was introduced to allow PCI Express to play in mobile devices, in like phones and tablets. 
And then, of course, PCI Express Gen 4 doubles the speed of PCI Express Gen 3. And then in the memory area, which is maybe like, you know, what we think would evolve the, the least amount, it actually has evolved the most. So in just the past couple of years, there's been like five different new memory standards that are optimized for different types of designs, servers, graphics, phones, tablets, et cetera. So what all this means for verification engineers is life has gotten a lot harder in just the past couple of years. Uh, normally, verification engineer gets handed uh, an, uh, the spec for their new chip maybe a month before they have to start working on it, before, a month before you have to start testing it. And it's like, okay, here, here's the spec, and oh, it'll be easy, you know, and it's, we only thought you needed three weeks to prepare instead of a whole four weeks, so here's three weeks. And uh, by the way, it has eight new standards, and so read up on all of those standards and understand them well enough, not just to verify that design works, but understand it well enough so that you could break the design, right? Because you're supposed to find bugs in, in the design. And uh, so that's the challenge that people are faced with. And that's what we try to help with our verification IP. And so this slide right here represents the whole Cadence verification IP catalog. And it's divided up into different groups, and I'll explain what those mean in a second. But everything in a yellow box is a new uh, VIP product that was introduced in just the last year. So we can see we have a lot of new products. And we released those because of all those new interfaces. And in fact, if we go back five years ago, that we'd only see half as many products on this slide as we have today. So one of our big efforts is to keep up with the, the latest specifications and then provide VIP for those at a very early stage, when only there's two or three leading companies that are investing in that interface. Now, sometimes this requires us making a bet. Do we, which interface do we think is worth uh, supporting? And we frequently uh, bet on something that turns out people don't really want so much. Okay? So like the mobile PCI Express is actually kind of like that. We mentioned that we had VIP for it very early. But that just hasn't caught on in the mobile world like that group had hoped it would. So OK, that's all right. We'll you know, have it out there, keep supporting it, and we'll, we'll see what the future holds. But that's what we do. We sort of take the risk to invest in this VIP, develop it early, and then uh, to be able to support the, the ones that really do take off. OK, now in terms of these groups here, our product line is divided into one, two, three, four, five different groups. This first one is simulation VIP. And this is what people normally think of when they think of verification IP. So it is uh, these known good reference models with checks and tests that support logic simulation. So our products run with the Cadence simulator. They also run just as well with the Synopsys simulator or with the Mentor simulator. So regardless of what you're using, you can use the Cadence VIP. The ones in the middle are memory models. So memory models are a little bit different. Um, with in the case of simulation VIP, we're modeling a theoretical design. So let's say you have a USB host, and so you need to test it with a USB device, and you use our VIP to model a device. Well, it's not a particular product, right? It could be any USB device. But with memory models, you get sort of an additional luxury of there's memory vendors that supply actual part numbers, right? So here's a Samsung flash memory part number da 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 da. So we not just supply a theoretical model to cover flash in general, but an actually, in that case, like a Samsung specific model for that particular part number. And so we have about 60 or so memory types, but there's 6,500 models that are grouped among those 60 types of memory models. So you can test your design against the exact memory parts that you're going to be designing in, and even do things like second source testing. So that's all with the memory models. And then on the far right, we have accelerated VIP. That works with our Palladium hardware accelerator to speed up simulations by 1,000 or even 10,000 times faster than you can do with software. We have a variety of productivity tools to help make the experience more efficient. And then we have assertion-based VIP that is used in formal analysis. Any questions at this point? OK. I don't know if it matters that I point at it. 
There we go. OK. So we might say, well, why choose Cadence VIP? There's certainly other choices for commercial verification IP. Or why don't you just do it yourself, right? You can model it internally. Well, it all starts with the protocol specification. And these specs are, can range from a couple hundred pages to over a thousand cases in the case of PCI Express. So there, there's a lot to digest. And then out of that specification, to create a verification IP component, you need to um, develop like five things based on that spec. So one are uh, uh, all the state machines. You have to model all the state machines defined in the specification. Then to be useful, you'd want this verification IP to do automatic checks for all the requirements in the spec. So let's just say there are some you know, uh, host issues a command, and the device is supposed to send an acknowledge within a certain number of clock cycles. That would be the example of a check, right? So if that didn't happen, then that would be an error, and you'd like the VIP to flag that as an error. So, and there can be hundreds, there can be a thousand different checks that you would want, depending on the specification. And then test sequences, things that help to stimulate your design under test. And then a couple of things that verification engineers need something called a coverage model and a verification plan. Those are things that help them to be more efficient. And if you did it yourself, you, there's a number of challenges here. One is, well, in your company, do you have the protocol expertise on that, on that subject? So maybe you do Ethernet Max, and do you really have the Ethernet expertise? Well, somebody in your company has it, but most likely it's an architect or some very senior person that you don't want coding up a tool, right, that everybody else is going to use. So do you have that available expertise? Do you have the time to develop the VIP? So uh, one customer told us, this was several years ago, they were going to a new generation of SATA. And he goes, you know, this one line change in the spec is now, which doubled the speed of the SATA interface, is going to cost me two engineers for six months to develop our internal VIP to be able to test those designs. So it can be pretty substantial. And then you have to support users and, and maintain it going forward. So rather than develop it internally, increasingly customers are looking for external providers, and so like Cadence. And the Cadence VIP is uh, structured kind of in this way. So we provide a multi-language test bench interface. So basically covering all the major languages that verification engineers use to test their design. So that's one thing. And then optimize cores based on the engine, whether it's simulation or acceleration, that are used to execute the simulation. The uh, test bench interface, System Verilog UVM, that's like the most popular interface today. It also supports the UVM E interface, which is popular in some circles. It will also enable people to use uh, plain Verilog or plain VHDL or C to uh, interact with the verification IP. And then in terms of the cores, we provide cores that are optimized for logic simulation and also for hardware acceleration. So these, and for instance, for hardware acceleration, those are synthesizable cores, and that part of the VIP gets synthesized into the, like the Palladium hardware accelerator. And in terms of simulator support, we support the big three simulators, as well as the uh, Jasper Gold formal verification uh, tool, you know, Cadence recently acquired Jasper, and then Palladium Hardware Accelerator. So overall, uh, we've got over 500 customers using this VIP. It's by far the most widely used VIP, and there's thousands of designs that have been verified uh, with it. And we have an acronym covering some of the major differentiators for our VIP. We have certain elements about it that make it particularly useful for SOC level verification. You know, you could verify it at IP block level or up at an SOC level. We have support for the memories, the availability leader. So on that slide that I presented earlier, we showed over 100 different protocols that we support, and we try really hard to be first with new protocols. We're not first all the time, but 90% of the time we are first with a new VIP. And uh, ready-made for your environment, so whatever the languages you're using, whatever the simulator you're using, you can adapt this, you can use this VIP out of the box for it. And technically advanced, we have a couple of interesting products that help to support the user experience, and I'm going to show those on the next couple of slides. But any questions at this point? 
sometimes they give away some kind of freebie, you know, if you ask a question. So I don't, I don't know. So you might be missing something. I'm not sure. So let's just take a look. OK, one thing is, uh, in terms of productivity tools, is something we're really proud of. We just released this. It's called the Indago Protocol Debug App. And um, this is a gr graphical user interface that's used to um, illustrate what's happening in the, the transmission link between your design and the verification IP. So in this case, this is a PCI Express example, but there's four windows. And the thing that's like super cool, we'll just jump to that immediately, is the state machine viewer. So what this shows is it'll show what state the verification IP is in. Like if PCI Express, they've got these different state machines. And there's one really complicated one called the link training state machine. And that's what executes when the, when the link is being powered up. And um, so this will show you, hey, here's in simulation, I'm in this state. And then you move forward in simulation, and it went to another state. And here's the reason why it transitioned. Because your design issued this command, and so I then followed that command and went to the next state. So this is really good for debugging you know, problems that come up, you know, unexpected behaviors in your design. And uh, there's you know, nested state machines. So you're looking at one. You could click down to a sub-state machine, then back up and over to a different one. This channel viewer provides like a, sort of a stripe chart, like a lab equipment style view of the link. So you know, in the lab with real hardware, you'd have, uh, say, like a LaCroix tester that you'd plug in, and you'd be able to see uh, stripe charts. And so this mimics that in the pre-silicon environment. And then the smart log tells you what's going on with that, with that verification IP component. And you can tell it, hey, I want you to track certain combinations of things. So um, you know, think of it. How, how you'd have to do that if you were in traditional logic simulation with a waveform viewer. You have to do all these mental gymnastics in your head to think about how the waveforms translate to these, this higher level behavior. And, but with the smart log, you can just pipe in some simple combinations of text commands, filters, if you will, and see only the behavior you're interested in. And then the life story tracks like everything. Everything happens you know, to that VIP, all the different packets, and et cetera. So that's in Dago. And we are doing um, a demonstration of this over at the Cadence booth. I think it's tomorrow afternoon. If you just go over there and say you want to sign up for an Indago demo, you can see that. Yes? The question is, is Indago a separate debugging tool, or is it shipped with the VIP? So it's an optional product for the VIP. And so the way it works is you get the Indago product, and then it supports all of the VIP that are like enabled for Indago. So if you get it, you could use it on USB, you could use it on PCI Express, et cetera. Oh, I see. could you use your current debugger to use the protocol debugging? So your current debugger meaning your simulator GUI. OK, this is a companion to the simulation GUI. It doesn't replace it. It's a companion. Uh, so Verdi is an example, right? So this would be a companion tool to that. You would still do use that tool for its normal functions, but this is an, an additional thing that you'd have up on your screen as well that you could run concurrently. Thank you for asking a question. Um, another tool that we have uh, to help the engineer is called uh, Triple Check. And Triple Check is uh, a tool that helps you test the design. And it provides a test suite, functional coverage, and a verification plan. An engineer uses a GUI to configure the VIP to match the design under test. And that GUI writes out a system Verilog UVM file that's then run in the logic simulation. It talks to the VIP. In fact, it configures the VIP to match the design under test. Then it selects from a test library only those tests that make sense given your particular design. Those are run through simulation, and all the coverage is output into a database. And this database can be used by third-party simulators. And uh, so whatever debugging environment you have would pull direct from that database. In the Cadence environment, it's supported by a tool called vManager, which will map it the results back to a graphical rendering of the protocol specification and show you exactly what chapters and subchapters in that spec have been covered. 
And so this is a really useful tool for uh, making sure that you've done all your homework. And that group of things together is called the triple check product. I'm just doing a time check. Looks like we've got about five more minutes. Um, another thing that uh, people are faced with today is that the, the interconnects, I mentioned that the ARM fabrics have become you know, more options in recent, recent years. And um, in fact, the fabrics are now typically layered. So in this example, this upper left area um, represents a CPU complex. So maybe you have multiple cores, and those are supported by their own fabric, and then link through another fabric to the rest of the chip, and then so on and so forth. So architects can um, insert different types of fabrics in their chip to get the optimum like bandwidth and latency out of it. So when you run uh, insert VIP into this simulation, the VIP normally is set up to check to make sure that the protocol is being adhered to properly. So if it's using like the AMBA AXI ACE protocol, then it would, it, the VIP would verify that that ACE protocol is being adhered to. But that doesn't tell you really that the, that the transactions went from the right master to the right slave and that they were transformed in the correct way. And so we have a separate VIP product that addresses that, and it's called the Interconnect Validator. And what that does is it, it monitors your simulation, it collects data from all the VIP inserted in the simulation, and collects it into one point. So it can verify that the transactions that left the particular master that they did end up in the, in the right slave, and also that were maybe transformed in the correct way. So a simple transformation might be that, let's say it was a 30 or a 64-bit bus coming out of the processor, and it was supposed to end up at the slave as two sequential 32-bit words, so it'll verify that. It also does very complex um, verification for multi-core designs that, are, that share uh, a cache-coherent uh, fabric. So in this way, it could make sure that all the the caches are updated properly after a, a data value changes in one master, and it's supposed to get updated in the other master caches, and our VIP will verify that that took place correctly. So that's what the interconnect validator is for. And then there's a, a yet one more tool called the interconnect workbench, and this takes that information collected by interconnect validator and then does analysis of it to give you uh, latency and bandwidth results for your chip. And so Interconnect Validator connects in with the ARM design tools, and it takes IP extract, IP exact information uh, that characterize the fabric, and then it lets you create a test bench, which it does automatically, and then run the simulation, and then show you the results in a GUI. And this is what the GUI looks like and it shows you different kinds of plots that relate to latency and bandwidth. So you can see for the different paths in your design, say from a video processor to memory, does it have the uh, bandwidth that you're expecting? And for processor fetches to memory, are those fetches coming back with the latency requirement that, you, that you've specified? And this is a tricky part of design, and it usually takes a number of iterations to get it right. And so that's why having a tool that will automatically link to the ARM tools and, and create a test bench for you and then rerun it uh, is a real big productivity savings. So uh, that's Interconnect Workbench. And the result of all this is uh, that customers have been very happy with this VIP and trust it for doing their designs. We're by far the market share leader in this area. We've support for over 100 protocols. As I mentioned before, 6,500 memory models and uh, thousands of designs verified. So thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Tom, thank you so much. Hey, stick around. What we have uh, is we're going to give out some raffle tickets for our 250 drawing for an iPad mini. Um, so that's very nice. And then uh, if you want, if you'd like a, uh, a coffee mug, I don't know, we have, we'll just, just show your ticket up front and we'll get you a mug if you like. So thank you so much, and our IP Talks presentations are every half hour. And I hope to see you at 3 o'clock for, you know, or 2.50 for our drawing right after that. 
is our panel discussion with ARM, Samsung, and Global Foundries. Thank you so much.